Hey guys, it's Jake. In this video, I'll be talking about two ways to run your clothing brand drops, the pre-order method and the inventory method. The basic differences between these two is that with the pre-order method, you charge your customers first without having any product, then use the revenue to pay for production, then ship to customers once production is finished. The customers are pre-ordering the goods, almost like pre-ordering a video game at GameStop. The inventory method consists of you buying the products first, waiting for production to finish, holding that as inventory, then releasing your collection and shipping out the products as soon as possible since you already have them as inventory on hand. So basically, pre-order method takes money in first, then money out, then product in, then product out. The inventory method takes money out, then product in, then money in, then product out. Now let's go over how to execute both methods. Let's start with the pre-order way. Here's what the basic process looks like. So first you want to design your collection, then create your presentable mockups, hype up the drop, launch day or open store. This is the first day the money is coming into your account. Then you want to close the store. Then you begin production. This is when the money is leaving your account. Then you receive the products, products are coming in. You ship the orders, products are going out, and then post purchase behavior. So let's expand each of these. So this is where the absolute beginning is. What do you want to make? Maybe it's a new idea you haven't thought about at all yet. Maybe you have some graphics you've been sitting on for a while that you want to put out, or they could be new colorways or iterations of previous products. So you're essentially just expanding on pieces that already represent your brand. So design your collection how you please, however that may look. Next is to create mockups for these items, which may already be in an acceptable mockup format. But let's talk about it. Since this is a pre-order and no product actually exists yet, you want your presentable mockup to look as appealing as possible. There's many ways to get a good mockup picture of a piece of clothing. You could go to wholesale websites like Rooporter and download their mockups, but be wary because if you're not selling this exact hoodie as your blank, then customers may wonder why their actual product doesn't look like the mockup picture. You could go to another vendor's website and simply screenshot their product picture, assuming it's the exact blank you're using, which is more consistent. But the product image may look pixely and not the highest of quality. You could also buy a sample of whatever blank you want to use and take your own pictures, then reuse those pictures, thus making your own mock-up product pick. I'm going to interrupt the video real quick to tell you guys about my new Sieg's Vector mock-up pack. This downloadable file includes 23 vectorized garment PNGs, the base Adobe Illustrator file for custom editing, measurement guidelines to make easy tech packs, and an example collection to show how the pack is used. These vector garments are also fantastic when submitting files to manufacturers. Everything looks very clean and easy on the eyes, perfect for communicating your ideas flawlessly. Create fluid and cohesive clothing collections now with my vector mock-up pack. Happy designing. Add over. So now your mockups are looking all nice and professional, almost like the real thing, which is great because we're going to be using these to post on social media and our website, so they better look good. Once your collection is all mocked up, you have to think about how you're going to build hype. There's a million ways to do this, and then some but I'll just list the main ones for now that most brands tend to do. Once you fully practice and understand these, then it's up to you to add on to them with your own creative efforts as you see fit. I will talk briefly about these, as you can YouTube how to do these way more thoroughly than what I can talk about here. First is Facebook ads and Instagram ads, which can be one and the same. Running Facebook and Insta ads nowadays is absolutely necessary if you want to make any progress. It's become the new norm. Social media marketing is how every business grows, period. You need to do this. You can YouTube how to set up your Facebook pixel that will connect with your Shopify and also spend a few hours a day researching the Facebook algorithm and how ads work. It is a lot of work, I know. This is an actual skill, like learning another software. You need to start somewhere. Or you can hire an external ad agency which will know exactly how to do all of this for you and save you tons of time, money, and headaches. Tons of headaches. When I started running ads, I hit so many obstacles and spent hundreds of dollars testing what ads worked before I finally found a campaign strategy that works for me. Now I use an ad agency that's literally doubled my revenue every drop. I already talked about this in my How I Made $69,000 in 9 Days video, but basically I recommend Epoch Studios as an ad agency you should check out because of the massive success I had with them. Check out the video I mentioned, it'll be linked in the description. Watch it all, then come back here so you're up to speed. You see how efficient and beneficial it was for me to use an external agency? If you want to see if an ad agency would work for you, contact Epoch Studios and tell them Sieg sent you to get $100 off your one-time initiation fee. And that sums up Facebook ads. Another hyping up marketing tactic is to use r slash streetwear startup on Reddit. This is a subreddit on Reddit, which is basically a collection of sub-communities ranging from memes like r slash funny, to the more bizarre, like r slash interesting as fuck. 
but our slash streetwear startup is a sub forum that houses tons of active brands and potential consumers. It's a subreddit that is specifically meant for starting brands wanting to post their content in the early stages to the masses. Some posts blow up and some don't. It depends how good the content is and what time you post, what day you post, what copy you have in the description, and so on. Here are some examples of things I posted a long ass time ago. Some blew up and had tons of engagement and others didn't. It happens, but the more you post, the more content there will be for people to see, which means more people funneling to your website and Instagram and Twitter and so on. Even to this day, I post my clothes on it every now and then if I feel like it. It's super easy to do and should be a little extra thing to do in the early stages, or even in the later stages if you've been running a brand for a while but never knew about this. Just try it. A third hypey marketing tactic is to contact archive pages on Instagram. Some examples are Stay Grounded, Archive Pieces, or Hoodie Archive. These are pages that basically act as publishers. They come in a variety of sizes and styles of posting, and you'll gradually become aware of them as you exist on Instagram. As you continue to post clothing and look at clothing and engage with clothing posts or whatever, you're really telling Instagram that you love this kind of content and that it should show you more of it, which you will. You'll notice more clothing related content on your explore page. You see a hoodie you like or some pants that are cool, click it. See who posted it, it could be an archive page. Some have 2K followers, some have 8K or even 100K. Usually these types of pages will post in their page profile that you can DM them for a promotion. So do that and ask what their rates are. There's always more to do when hyping up your brand, but I'll leave it at these three important ones for now. I'll make a more dedicated marketing video later. Now back to the main premise. So now it's launch day and you wanna start selling your collection and collecting orders. This is where the money is coming into your account. You should have a website way before this point. YouTube had a set up one with Shopify. It's what a lot of people use and hasn't given me any problems. Make sure your shipping rates are all set up, your store theme and colors are to your liking, and all your website picks are formatted the same. And that's pretty much it for the website. Paste the website link to your bio and you're ready to start collecting orders, but remember to do all this before drop time. Do not be running all over the place minutes before drop just because you forgot a simple step. It is not a fun time. So you can leave your store open for however long you want. You can leave it open for a day or two to promote exclusivity or leave it open for a whole week to allow everyone to copy if they want to. Once you reach the end of your time interval, you can either lock the website with your password page or leave the store open and set all products as out of stock. Now your drop is over. Now begins production. This is where the money is leaving your account. Even before you started hyping up your drop, you should already know what manufacturer you plan to use. Whether it's a local print or embroidery shop or an overseas manufacturer, you should be organizing all your order quantities and design measurements to send to them. This part is mainly up to you. I have other videos that explain how to find manufacturers and how to get stuff made, so I recommend watching those for more details on this step. Now you'll be receiving the products. This is when the products are coming into your possession. Organize them how you see fit to get ready for fulfillment. Now it's time for fulfillment. I'm assuming you'd be doing your own fulfillment because anything under a few hundred orders is very manageable on your own. If you have a nice system going with your boxes all organized and your labels printed out, you can get this one done in a few hours. Just put some music on and get in the groove. Then drop off at the post office of the carrier you're using. Now onto post-purchase behavior. You're going to get plenty of DMs from people asking for shipping tracking, when the order will arrive, if they can change their address or size, and so on. Reply to all of these. Make those customers feel comfortable and make them see you as a brand they can rely on. Be active and responsive to these people and do your best to help them with whatever issues or questions they have. Don't ghost them. I've seen so many brand Instagram accounts where the comments on their posts are filled with check DM or ship my shit or it's been two months, where's my shit? You do not want that and it's a bad look. It makes your page look very scammy and or not trustworthy. And that's more or less how to run a pre-order method. Now let's dive into the workings of the inventory method. The steps in this are practically the same as the pre-order method, but just in a different order. So when I go over these, I'll probably just refer to what I just said when explaining the pre-order method. So first we design the collection, submit those to get samples made, we can either receive the samples, which is optional, or you could just see the pictures from the manufacturer and then start the bulk order. Then you start the bulk order. This is when the money is going out of your account. Then you will receive the products. Then the products are coming into your possession. You will then hype up the drop. Then you will launch the store. This is when the money comes in. You'll ship the orders out. That's when the products are leaving your possession. And then the post-purchase behavior. So let's dive into each of these. This is the exact same process as I said earlier, designed the same way you normally would. Refer back to the pre-order section of the video where I talk about this. So for this step, you'd submit your design to your manufacturer like normal, but instead of jumping into the bulk order like I did for the pre-order, you'd order a smaller volume of items if your manufacturer requires minimums, or one sample each, which is usually standard for cut and sew pieces, especially for overseas manufacturers. And once 
Once you submit all the designs, measurement, and instructions, that's it for this step. So now you'd receive the samples, see if they're to your liking. If they are, then continue to start the bulk order. If not, then revise any issues and order the next revision of samples. So samples are all looking good, now it's time to place the bulk order. This is where the money is going out of your account. If it's not already obvious, you should be using the same manufacturer who made the samples as the manufacturer who makes the bulk order. There are specific occasions when you need a different manufacturer to make the bulk order, but this is rare. Usually when that same manu has too long of bulk product time or if they're just being an ass with communication. Make sure the manu who's making the samples has shown decent competency during this process. You don't want to be stuck or locked into a shitty manufacturer. Now you'll be receiving your bulk order once production is finished, which usually takes a few weeks. Double check if the bulk order matches the samples. This one is more or less the same as stated earlier, but now you can add the note of a limited stock, which is a nice incentive for people to purchase from. It adds scarcity because there's only 50 shirts available to buy and so on. Plus, with holding inventory, you can ship out immediately. So mentioning that is another good incentive for people to buy. The store will be live now. Now this is where the money starts to come in. Be mindful of the advice I mentioned previously in the pre-order section, it's virtually the same thing. Now to ship the orders, this is where the products are going out. You can ship these packages immediately after the drop is live, same day or maybe the following day if you want to manage DMs and customer questions as orders are coming in, whatever you want to do. And finally, post-purchase behavior for this inventory method, basically answering DMs, emails, and so on exact same thing as stated previously in the pre-order method. And that's it. Both the pre-order method and inventory method are very similar. The main difference is the order of operations for some of these steps, specifically when the bulk production is made. The benefit of pre-order method is not having a cap of max orders to collect, and it's easier for brands that can't quite invest in bulk inventory yet. The benefit of the inventory method is to make your products feel more limited, because they are, and it allows you to cycle the production cost back into more production. So essentially, if you spend $5,000 on inventory, then you regain that money back as revenue during that drop, you would be getting your expense cost back. You could then cycle that $5,000 back into the next drop's inventory. Thus, the $5,000 will be floating around, only being used for production usages. And before you go, I made a Discord. It holds the same sentiment as this YouTube channel, where it's made for brands to come together and help each other. Ask whatever questions you want, or answer whatever questions you want. I also use it to share news and leaks from my own brand, but the main purpose is to help the community. Join the Discord now, link in bio. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you've learned something new. Comment down below if you have any questions. And check out my brands, they're pretty cool. See ya.